Welcome to the New Rugged Order Podcast, exclusively on the Hard Knock Digital Culture Channel. Now give it up to your host people, MM2K. What's up people, what's up people, what's up people, it is your boy, MM2K of PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, where you're at right now on Twitch. MM2K Gaming, Cloud Dosage, Broadband Bullies, you name it, we are there. And man, oh man, oh man, do we have a treat for you today. We have a special NRO podcast, really in a special. I did a special NRO podcast this past Sunday because there's some things in regards to content and other things that we wanted to talk about. I'm going to check that out on this channel. Um... But I'm going to put that on YouTube the same day that I put this on YouTube, which will be, what's today, Tuesday? These both will air on YouTube back to back. You'll get my special message uh, from Sunday first, and then you'll get this next. Uh, Man, oh man, we got a special one today. Uh, We're going to be talking about the EU's decision to approve the APK deal. Um, Not surprised. Reuters had predicted this or not they had they had leaked this a month ago they had did another leak more specific that a decision was coming monday reuters is good at this stuff and we don't want a hypocritical stance 
because I got something special from Reuters <laughs> that's going to put all the zealots, all those that are bloviating and going over the top with this and not kicking the tires and really looking at this down the middle, regardless of what you want emotionally. We got something else from Reuters that really tells you the state of this deal. All right. So I appreciate entities like Reuters. They are spot on they're great they understand and they have a great business acumen to not only understand legal proceedings but to understand the market that is key when analyzing and all this if you have people that are just telling you about legal proceedings that tells you nothing about the regulator culture and you're not going to understand what's going on or why or when cma drops a decision about cloud gaming or when ftc sues or were e you even though they are agreeing to the to the deal but with contingencies at hand you know what i'm saying you and this all based around cloud gaming huh how's that possible it's a nascent market a lot of you are repeating that and you don't even understand what that means you're saying it like the nascent you're saying it like nascent means it's irrelevant no look it up a lot of you have been led astray by legal hacks who are getting clicks, who are getting attention on this, and they've been telling you wrong. When you look at what they've been telling you, the core stuff they've been telling you have been wrong. So regardless of where you want this to land or I want it to land, we can be on different sides of the aisle there. Where we shouldn't be on different sides of the aisle is the facts and what's really going on. All right? So we're going to talk about all that today. I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing it because quite honestly, I got a lot of stuff to do today. You know what I'm saying? Um, but shout out to Cold Blood Sensei. Shout out to Internet of Games. I see y'all up in here. My supporters, as always. Uh, Cold Blood Sensei says, yo, yo, yo. Roy, uh Internet of Games says Reuters has 90% of the truth and accuracy rating. This is the highest rating of any mainstream news agency. Exactamundo. I, I, fo I follow the experts. Like I was having a very great conversation with I, what, what seems like a very great person. Um, I'm going to use that to, to extenuate some points there. I don't know if they're watching. Maybe they are. Uh, shout out to you. With, what's it? I think Watchmen of Games. Um, shout out to you. Very enlightening discussion. I, I really enjoyed are back and forth because um, it was cordial for one, um, and for two, I think it was it was enlightening. Watchmen's Collective. So we're going to talk about this, um, and I'm going to use our conversation as a basis of how different sides can t can come to singular conclusions, even if we don't agree. Still, and the fact that you may have some situations going on where people are so infused emotionally and they want something to happen that they caveat the information that they're getting in hopes that something happens one way and how that may inadvertently even though your intentions may or well even though what you want to do is well intended that may inadvertently be misleading other people that's what it's all about we got to make sure that we don't create an echo chamber out here that we can state our opinions and say, well, I think this is what this means or what this may lead to, but still stay, stay centered on the facts. You know what I mean? So shout out to Wasserman's Collective for our conversation. I really appreciate it, my friend. Um, that being said, I would be remiss if uh, he said, <laughs> he said, <laughs> uh, he said, talk about post ups takes. Hey, look, let me tell you something. Shout out to my brother, post up. He's not going to give me my flowers, even though I've, I've made him do so behind closed doors. Uh, Cause he was, t they were totally wrong. And I give props to, I I'm happy for post up because he's learning a lot of legal proceedings. It, it, learning, learning more isn't bad. So he's acclimated himself with some people that are helping him understand what legal jargon and legal proceedings, what, what they mean. That's cool. I remember year, decades ago, years ago, um, one of the businesses that I started that I ended up closing because I got when it comes to businesses, I got ADHD, but that's on another podcast. One of the businesses I started was I was flipping houses. Um, and then at the same time, me and my brother were going to open a video game business and I'm cheap. 
<laughs> Whatever I can do on my own, I'll cut out the middleman and do it myself. So I decided to do that when it came to legal representation, like drawing up our contracts. Like I didn't want to pay. There was no legal zoom back then. And I didn't want to pay a whole bunch of money to a lawyer to, to, to create simple contracts. So I went to um, the law library, a local law library. And for six months straight during my lunch, I went to the local library, law library, got me a law pass was $45. I remember it was the annual cost back then was $45. I don't know what it is. And a lot of people don't understand they can do that. And I went and I read law books with while lawyers were there. I talked to lawyers. I said, Joe, can you help me understand this, that, and the other? They were very helpful. You know what I'm saying? And I was able to design our own legal contracts. So when it came to us doing certain partnerships with people, when we were presenting them, with our ideals and we put these contracts out we did have a lawyer i i had a lawyer like look over my contracts and a lawyer represent us while we were making these deals and the lawyer said who drew up your contracts and i said i did he said what he said how did, he said you got a law degree he said what am i here for i said no 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 I went and studied specifically how to draw up these contracts. You still the expert, bro. You passed the bar and all that other stuff. But yeah, with a little bit of time and effort, you can do anything. You put your mind to it. So I'm and and what I see my brother post up going through right now, he's probably going through that same euphoria that I went through learning how to create contracts on my own. On my own, just going to the law library. The problem is, is that when you listen to a legal entity that has a particular bias, they want a specific outcome. You're not getting legal representation or you're not getting a legal education from a broad level, which is what you need. You need to understand the pros and cons of the argument that you present. And unfortunately, what's going on with my brother post up is the people that he's listening to that he's talking to, they are giving him legal advice, but they're giving him legal advice in one particular argument. They're not giving him cons. They're telling him, oh, no, there is no argument. There is no this and that. No, because they have an agenda. No, you need to understand the pros and cons of your legal argument, even if you think your legal argument is accurate. And the beginning of that is a thesis statement. When you do a, a legitimate thesis statement, you come up with three clues that extenuate your point, and then you have to come up with a rebuttal. And that is the meat and potatoes of your argument. If, if you can't create a powerful enough rebuttal to your point and your point still holds weight, then your argument is flawed. And I've, I've learned that I, I, I was blessed to learn that in high school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I see a lot of people on the internet, they don't even understand th that whole thesis element now. And they're, 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 you know, they're like me in their 40s. So yes, going and getting legal education is great, but it has to be well-rounded. And when you look at what these legal quote-unquote hacks have been telling people, was going to happen opposed to what really happened, th then you'll understand why I call them hacks. Your legal arguments are only as good as the outcome. Are you gonna go hire a lawyer who has like a 20% win rate? Even if he passed the bar, his arguments mean nothing because they're not gonna lead to the result that you want. So even though yeah, post up be doing a lot of capping. That's my bro. And I've been going back and forth with him behind the scenes about a lot of stuff, shooting down his narratives, trying to pre-warn my brother. Cause I, I because again, I, I get the euphoria. I get it twice. Again, when I had the legal library experience, when I went there years ago in my twenties to, to learn how to draw up contracts. And this was opposite of what I do for work. This is completely different. This is dealt with property. And, and and starting a business had nothing to do with my job. My job didn't, they didn't even like it because they don't like you moonlighting. Hence why I can't even be on, I can't even be on camera. They don't even like you moonlighting. So anywho, I, I get the euphoria that he, I get the feeling that the, the, the dope, that the dopamine that's running through his body and his veins 
when he feels like he's learning something new. I get it. I not only get it with this, but I get it with cloud gaming because I went through it again with cloud gaming, specifically to say something to do with gaming. I thought I knew enough. And then people had to educate like, no, MM2K, it's not about that. It's about this, it's about that, it's about this. And I went through like a year, a straight year of where everything that I knew about gaming had to be put to the side and I had to relearn under the minds of what's going on with cloud gaming and what the fathomable expectations are of that. And I tried explaining that to my brother post up in many arguments. And, no, 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 no. So that's why I give him so he don't understand. That's why I give him such a hard time now because I, I already been what you're going through now. And when I was trying to help you understand that you were dismissive, but now you want everybody to understand this euphoria, this excitement that you're having with learning just half the legal jargon like no it don't work that way when you have an opportunity to get a broad understanding of how something works you don't get no stripes when you're trying to pass off half a learning so i'm excited for him but but i'm concerned at the same time because of the half a learning that i see going on and we're going to address that today whatever so it's not just it's everybody out here there are legitimately well-intentioned people who want to understand what's going on they do they just been bamboozled there are people and we've talked about them at nauseum who are taking advantage of all this excitement around this deal for their own personal benefit like i said the legal hacks and all other stuff but there are legitimate people that need to understand what's going on all right and i'm not going to sit here and lie to you like i know all the legal jargon and and, and uh legal implement implication or le the the legal loopholes that can be I, I, i'm not going to sit there and go through all that what i am going to tell you is the most extreme likelihood i don't want to say most extreme the most plausible likelihoods to help you balance your expectations i'm not going to sit here and tell you about a a, a legal proceeding or loophole that has a one percent effective chance it's a waste of your time because there's something bigger and better that I think Xbox fans need to be focused on. All right, well, let's get right into it. Um, Cold Blood said, he says, talk about post. Seanathan, we got Seanathan in the house. He says, uh, hey, yo, who else we got up in here? We also got, he said, post up is best friend. <laughs> And then Jonathan is laughing. Oh, good. I, I, cold blood was ready for today. All right. Let me do one thing before we get into it. Um, I want to show you guys this. This is PNTS Network. This is our website where we do a lot of our content. A lot of stuff comes from me, our podcast, all that stuff. Um, you know, check it out. We got a lot of great content on there. And in addition, um, if you are interested, oh, the, the, the font changed on this. That's weird. If you are interested in learning specific stuff from the cloud side, you're going to want to check out our website, clouddoses.com, our sister website. Yes, y'all may not believe me. It's owned by PNTS Network, too. It's, it's site co created uh, with my homeboy, my PNC. Um, ooh, excuse me, Jack DeSlip. Um, check us out here. We got a lot of great stuff going on here. And I, and you know, nothing against any other source out there, but this undeniably in my mind is the best source to get all your cloud gaming news and understand what's going on. And you got a lot, a lot of takes, particularly this one about CMA versus the European, European competition, um, that don't agree with me. This is not a dictatorship. It helps that me and my partner, uh, Jack to slip. We, 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 we view things from, from different, uh, perspectives in the cloud. Um, so everything gets represented. And then I think we have full fledged, well-rounded discussions. Um, this is a take that's completely different from mine, but it's rooted in the facts. I can appreciate, uh, a, a conversation different from mine that's rooted in the facts. So if you want to better understand cloud gaming, why CMA made its decision to block based upon cloud gaming, why EU has specific issues 
that they're still monitoring in regards to cloud gaming where's cloud gaming coming from all of a sudden we were told by this youtube creator not youtube creator it don't matter understand why it matters check out clouddosage.com all right being that we did that uh i want to also pre-warn you guys that i got an important delivery coming today and i'm waiting for and it's only going to take me like five minutes to get the delivery person squared away um so therefore I'm, as soon as they come i might have to take an intermission they can come anytime from now till the end of this podcast or not until after so uh understand that you know we we might go into an intermission it's only going to take it's only going to be a five minute intermission at that all right uh one more one more comment great one from uh our homie iog before we get started he says i said it when stadia closed every stadia content creator you have the advantage now you have three years of advanced learning you are ready for this transformation ahead of the pack absolutely absolutely And, and i think we got more well, you know what, IOG, to your point, which is a great one, I think I think you're on the spot with three years. You know why? Because CMA really put cloud gaming in a stratosphere. And the longer that this is prolonged, the longer people are going to get interested. Look, clouddoses.com, we, we always had great numbers as relative to, to cloud gaming. Um, but now we've reached a new plateau. We had 100,000 unique visitors. That, that's huge. Um, last last month, we're not slowing down. It's getting crazy out here, <laughs> and and a lot of that I feel is based off of excitement for the proposal of cloud gaming and XCloud. Like XCloud, cloud gaming and XCloud is big. I've been negative against it uh, as far as the output, but there is no denying the saturation. Like CMA is spot on. And I know people have been arguing, oh, no, they miscalculated. No, 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 no. You got to read specific entries uh, where CMA specifically said, you know, we asked Microsoft for specific cloud data and they got it. And Microsoft has shown publicly the picture to be able to provide it. We asked for specific cloud data. We got it. And we were even, we even minus out cloud data that was on the free tier because we didn't consider the free tier to be uh, fair for Microsoft as far as including the, their market share. And I even dis- I disagree with the CMA on that. I think they were actually cutting Xbox some slack. Why do I say that? Because the CMA made the wrong assertion that because the tier is free, that it doesn't, it's not relative to the market. That's false. Why? Because if I'm a Fortnite player, and Sachi Nadella has already asserted this, if I'm a Fortnite player who is only using, who's only playing on xCloud, because Fortnite is there, because I lost access when it was no longer natively available on iOS devices, and Satya Nadella has hinted that there's been millions of those cases. We've already got an article from The Verge confirming that. If I'm one of those people, guess what happens when I buy DLC or uh, uh, what, do, what do they call that? A, a, a season pass or a game, whatever it is. When I buy that, a portion of that money goes to Microsoft. A battle pass. And they say there's some skins that are $20 now on Fortnite. Microsoft gets a portion of that, whether it's on the free tier or not. So in actuality, CMA cut Microsoft some slack by not including Fortnite. Because what has happened is you've seen with Fortnite, I think Fortnite had a trickle down effect. Even though they cut out the Fortnite numbers or the X Cloud numbers due to Fortnite, Fortnite had a trickle down effect. What ended up happening is when those people that couldn't play natively on iOS devices then got access to, to X Cloud, they were like, oh, this ain't bad. 
Because I'll be honest with you, even though I don't like xCloud, I will admit, when I played Fortnite on xCloud, it wasn't a horrible experience. They were like, oh, this ain't bad. I can actually play competitively on this somewhat. It's not as bad as people, cloud gaming isn't as bad as people made it out to be. Hold on, well, let me let me upgrade and get the paid for Game Pass. And let me play on the cloud there and check out some other cloud games via my phone. If people are playing xCloud, Fortnite via their phone, they might want to try other stuff. So maybe that ca- cascaded down to them trying the paid for version of xCloud via Game Pass and playing other games. That's what the data tells me. People are looking at it like, and they're they're misreading the documents from CMA. They're thinking that that's 60 to 70. And and, and that doesn't make sense. You contradict yourself. And that's why you got a lot of you guys don't understand cloud gaming enough and aren't uh, 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 don't have an acumen to the business, that sector where your timing contradicts yourself. How does game pass in 2021 or xCloud in 2021 go to only a meager 20%, but then automatically shoots up to 60-70% if CMA is just figuring all the Game Pass subscribers. Game Pass didn't go up 60-70%, right? Like, that doesn't make sense. The only thing that makes sense is that that Game Pass xCloud usage went up 60-70% due to Fortnite and it did Satya confirmed it blew up so they can't be including just general game pass numbers because it don't match the general game pass growth it doesn't make any sense and again they're using paid for services Y'all are looking at Game Pass numbers at 20 million, and then you're looking at, and, and then you're saying, yeah, uh, they're looking at the Game Pass numbers at 20, 25 million, and they're bumping that up against NVIDIA GeForce Now. No! NVIDIA GeForce Now overall is at 20 million. Their pay for service is significantly less. They told that you were informed this if you were paying attention to cloud gaming news, you were informed this by the Ampere Group. So your argument is bogus. If CMA is only doing figures with paid for services, and they're including all of Game Pass. Then Game Pass, then the numbers would be like 99% for Xbox because the numbers for NVIDIA GeForce Now, for instance, would, would significantly shrink or the percentages would. Because GeForce Now was not at 20 million paid active users. They're not. The overall usage is around there, including paid or free. But you guys don't understand it because you don't follow cloud gaming. That's your problem. And that's why your arguments are flawed because you're just regurgitating stuff from people that don't do their homework and they have an agenda not to do it. Let's get into the show. I'm done arguing. (laughs) All right. So here's what's going on. Okay. First and foremost, Again, for those that may not know, I want to put it out there so there's no mysteries or saying, oh, you, you know, you're caveating too, MM2K. No, I have an ability to look down the middle despite my overall synopsis or my overall wants, right? I don't want the deal to pass. And who I I am as a gamer is I'm a former Xbox gamer who has become disgruntled with the platform. I'm I'm not a fan of Xbox anymore. There's nothing about Xbox that I like anymore. I used to have them in my house. Uh, You know, it was my go to platform. I loved Xbox. When I started making content on YouTube, I was an Xbox, a self-admitted Xbox fanboy. And this new regime under Phil Spencer, they have done nothing for me. So that's just putting everything in perspective. I don't like X. There's nothing about Xbox that I like. I don't like Game Pass. I don't like X Cloud. Nothing. Windows on PC. I don't like it at all. It's being honest. That being said, I can square things down the middle. Like before this APK purchase came about, 
you can go check the receipts. When Microsoft did the whole Fortnite thing for xCloud, I said, this is going to make them number one now. Immediately when they did, I said, this is the best thing, the smartest thing they've done in regard to their saturation in the cloud. This, this is going to make them number one in the cloud because the data that we were extrapolating in the past, me and my partner, Jack Deslip, who loves xCloud, by the way, but the data we were extrapolating in 2021 and before did match what Microsoft was saying. They were dead last in the cloud as far as usage. As far as consistent usage, let me be very clear. Not MAUs, because they still had a lot of people that would try it. That makes them an MAU. But as far as consistent usage, they were dead last. Microsoft is right about 2021. But in 2022, that totally reversed itself. In 2022, they shot up to number one. Why? Again, we already talked about it. Fortnite. And that had a trickle down effect even to the pay for the paid for services. So even though I didn't like xCloud, I can't stand it. I think it's a pitiful effort in regards to its cloud gaming peers, especially when Xbox was the main ones, that they were the ones that got me excited about cloud gaming. They were talking so boldly about a stadium wasn't even wasn't even around yet. They're the ones that got me excited about cloud gaming. <clears throat> and when I tested them out for them to really be dead last in performance and, and, and output and all that stuff, I was dismayed. That was like, that kind of was the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, maybe you can't compete in, in, in the console, but you're ahead as far as technology is concerned and you're going to blow it out in the cloud. And here you're dead last. I was like, no, nah, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out like a scout on a new route. Even though that's how I felt personally, when they struck that Fortnite deal, the receipts are there. I said, this is going to make xCloud number one for now. And I was a thousand percent right. Internet of Games was there. Internet of Games can vouch. Sean L was there when I said it. I said, oh, I said, this is the smartest thing that Xbox could have done. And still was like, but still personally, I don't like that. It's crap. It's trash to me. But having Fortnite on there the way that they did when all other cloud platforms that do have Fortnite have a paywall associated to them. I said, and I played Fortnite on xCloud and I said, this, this is good enough. This is good enough. Never played Fortnite before in my life. Played it on xCloud and I did play it through a wired connection. But apparently it must not be that bad because of how it's blowing up the numbers even wirelessly. But I played, played it on a wired connection on my PC and I almost won the, the match, my very first match in Fortnite. I almost won. It was down to me and one person. I got killed. That's how well it played. So it was that was the best decision they could have made as far as them having a stranglehold in gaming in cloud gaming. And I do think there are flaws in the CMA formula. But when you look at the actuality or the totality of those flaws, they actually make it worse for Microsoft. I do agree with Microsoft. Well, no, no, no. Well, when you, I, there may be a problem with looking at it through M MAUs because MAUs don't tell you about dedicated access. However, the CMA, again, when, whenever you come up with an argument, you got to come up with the rebuttal and see if it's sufficient. The CMA can rebut. MAUs tell you how much exposure you're going to have. So even though the average consumer may not stick with it right now, as uh, cloud gaming maturizes and the fact that you have more exposure than anybody as shown in your MAUs, that's more people you can turn towards cloud gaming. So MAUs is the best way to look at it. They can make that argument. So even though I can sympathize rather See how I did that live on air? I had one argument. I put a rebuttal out there, shot it down. <laughs> you know, that's what you're supposed to do. That's how you kick the tires on things that are being said. But when I looked at uh, xCloud, we, we, I, I, I sympathize with Xbox in regards to use, them wanting to be referred to usage. It helps their case in 2021. It, it makes it even worse in 2022.
<laughs> so I don't think that's enough to to show some type of hardcore procedural mishap in uh, what CMA did. I think there were flaws in the formula for 2022, particularly not 2021, 2022, because I think they should have included the free tier. Anything that brings in money for said company, whether the tier is free or not, should be counted. You don't, uh, you don't omit Xbox's revenue when you're looking at the market because Fortnite is free to play. No, because they make money off of Fortnite. Actually, most of the money that, that these companies make is off of Fortnite. When Fortnite does bad, when they had that bad year, 2019 or 28, whenever it was, when like player usage went down, it significantly hurt everybody. Because all these companies are making a wallops of money off the percentages they get off the battle passes and the D and, and the DLC for Fortnite. So I think the C I actually think the CMA's uh, formula is flawed in Microsoft's favor because it should be counting the free tier. But again, I'm not going to cry over spilled milk. It is what it is. That's why I don't think the calculation is flawed enough to where it's going to make a difference where CAT can bounce it back. We'll get into that, though. All right. So here's what happened. All right. Um, EU ruled in favor of the deal with contingencies. Let me show you exactly. Oh, oh, oh. Wrong button. <laughs> Let me show you actually an email. I mean, a, a tweet tweet that I put out there I said EU decision is interesting cloud gaming also a deciding factor in the decision decision hits approval being conditional it's conditional another point for us predicting the cloud gaming's impact with that being said they approved it they're gonna they, they would let it go through but they're monitoring what's gonna happen like if Microsoft is gonna follow through right they're going to be con they're, so there's going to be contingencies to to the deal if they see that microsoft isn't following through then that's a problem for eu and i say the most interesting i think could be wrong for full eu approval microsoft has to give big bad amazon a deal too why do i say that because they the eu said the commission's decision is conditional See, nobody wants to talk about that. That's up there jumping, flipping, and, and, and pouring crystal all over their chest <laughs> like they won the Super Bowl. Um, upon full compliance with the commitments, under supervision of the commission, an independent trustee will be in charge of monitoring their implementation. So what they're saying is, when Microsoft said that they wanted to do, we agree with it. We agree with it. We think that what they're offering, the 10-year deals to these cloud providers, I think they EU feels is good enough. But they're saying they will, their approval isn't complete until they actually do that. They do all that. So you can't just sit there and tell us what you're going to do, Microsoft. You'll get our final stamp of approval. We're going to let it go through, but you'll get the final stamp of approval once you commit all these deals. And I'll commit to these deals. And also they have here right to stream those games. It says game subscriptions that includes Activision games have the right to stream those games with any cloud streaming service of their choice and play them on any device using any option. So there's, they're talking about what they expect from these deals for Microsoft to allow for consumers. They want all these game subscription services to include uh, to be able to to play um, these Microsoft games without uh, uh, you know what I'm saying w without restrictions to the cloud platforms that they want to play on. That's why I said, "Oh, Amazon Luna." That makes Amazon Luna a must, right? And I say that because 
Amazon Luna has multiple tiers. Again, if you don't follow cloud gaming, you don't know this man. <laughs> Amazon Luna has Luna Plus, which is their version of um, Game Pass in the cloud. It's their version of the current X Cloud. My partner, my PNC, um, Jack to Slip, effectively argued that this is not going to be in Luna Plus. Why? Because Luna Plus requires the game to natively be put on Luna and the compensation goes in the form of Luna paying Microsoft a, a sum or paying a publisher or developer a sum of money to allow their games to be natively on their platform that's not what eu is forcing microsoft to do in order for the, the conditional remedies to be you know suffice they're expecting people to pay micros they're expecting consumers to be able to pay microsoft directly in their already retail setups albeit um uh, what do you call it albeit uh um you know, buying the game a la carte or albeit the game being available in Game Pass. And all they're doing is they're going to allow said services to play the stream the game through their service. So Luna Plus is out. Jack is a thousand percent right on that. The possibilities though are Luna has three tiers. They have Luna, they have their Luna Plus service. They have the tier where a company can partner with them and create a channel, which would essentially be like a Game Pass type of thing. Or they have this bring your own game service where you can buy the game on PC. And if you have a Luna Plus subscription, you can stream it via xCloud. I mean, you can stream it via Luna. Kind of like GFN. If you have a GFN priority uh, um, membership at $9.99 a month that's how you stream your PC games the same would work with Amazon Luna with Luna Plus except now you get a, cat, you get a lineup of the extra games which NVIDIA GeForce Now doesn't provide so it kind of actually for some at the priority tier it actually makes it more lucrative than what GFN is providing because GFN doesn't give you access to a sublet of games unless they're free to play there's like games like apex legends or whatever that are playable through nvidia geforce now and if you have the free tier you can play those games too fortnite being another one but what i'm saying is there's a, a like a hundred fifty plus games that you get with your luna plus subscription so when you combine that with the fact that now i can play call of duty on luna with my luna plus subscription that makes luna a little bit more luna plus a little bit more lucrative possibly than the than, than the gfn premiere service which i'm gonna guess is their more um lucrative uh tier the more lucrative membership i love the the ultimate tier. there's nothing touching the ultimate tier but i i, I surmise that a lot of a lot more people are, are in the in the priority tier right so because of that and the fact that eu themselves said any there's nothing holding microsoft back from allowing the xbox games to be played on amazon luna even if it's to bring just for the bring your own game services even if they don't do it to partner up and do a channel they should make their games available to play on luna you already bought them now you can pay amazon luna and be able to play them in the cloud if you already bought them on pc there's nothing stopping microsoft from doing that that's why i believe amazon luna all of a sudden came out with the bring your own game services i have very good uh intel that tells me that this was something that stadia was going to do at first um but but you know stadia end up closing before the the planned rollout and amazon luna just bust just busting out the seams with it 
because I think they were they were setting themselves up to be like, hey, you can't forget about us now. Because now we're in uh, we're in EU territories. We're in EU territories. And now we got this bring your own game service that if you allow us to make games available there, we can benefit from this too. Very smart move by Luna. So that is what the deal actually means. They don't, they're, they're allowing Microsoft to move forward, at least from their perspective. They're allowing Microsoft to move forward. They're not haltering Microsoft to move forward. They're allowing Microsoft to continue to do their discussions to complete this merger, but they don't give their final stamp of approval until all the contingencies are met. The way that it's worded, it appears they got to include Amazon Luna. That's a big contingency because they really did all this that caused all these red flags because they wanted to smother out Amazon Luna and Google Stadia. It's well known in various circles that Microsoft first bought Bethesda and then went and got this APK deal in the hopes that Stadia or Google and, and Amazon say, why even bother? Particularly Google, who was really shattered after Bethesda was bought. Why were they shattered? Not just because of the, the, the games and stuff. They were working closely with each, with each other. Um, Mark Stratton of Ed Software believed, he said, there's nothing that's going on right now that's hampering the long term, the longevity of Stadia and xCloud. This is after Microsoft bought them. He had no incentive to say anything positive about Stadia at this point. He said there's nothing going on that rattles the long term ramifications. of So even from their partnership that was even skimmed down after the Microsoft purchase, they realized, hey, they got enough in place to where they can they, they, they can they can be here for a very long time. It's just because Google changed course to them in the middle of operating. So because of that, all right, it's important to understand why there, there was concerns in the first place and why cloud gaming is such a big whoop to do. Microsoft fumbled all over themselves. They made huge mistakes. First and top, oh, Amazon and Google, the big bad. I, I, I'm fearful of them coming into the market. Who are you? The consumer police you're not a regulator microsoft whenever a new competitor comes in the, com the 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 correct thing to say is you know what come on we want that smoke because we feel like we got the better product i'm concerned with them coming in here you're saying that about a global competitor and then right after that you try to pull from under the rug any partnership that can help them survive in said sector that's what caused the red flags. And we told y'all this last year. And y'all didn't listen because you were listening to these legal hacks, these dummies out here that don't understand the market in totality. We told y'all this last year. So with all that said, that is why this was even a red flag. This was known in major circles. This is why Xbox was doing this. And even though the EU, in my opinion, is being too lenient and expecting Microsoft to follow through, that it was still a concern for them. Now the CMA has refuted the EU's decision. And, and I want to talk about this because I, I put up another tweet. This is dang, the CMA just do a Matumbo and say, not in my house. <laughs> uh, they, they, they they say they respect the decision but when you look at 0. .45 out of this thread uh, they say they would replace a free hold on let me make sure that ain't my delivery person they said they would replace a free open and competitive market with one subject to ongoing regulation of games Microsoft sales the platforms to which it sells and the conditions so basically what they're saying is look Call of Duty just like you EU and FTC we all have concerns. This is at the beginning, the UK, US and European competition authorities are unanimous that the merger could harm competition in cloud gaming. Yes, they've all publicly stated that. They're saying, EU, we think you are wrong and giving Microsoft the benefit of the doubt that they are going to follow through in a competitively friendly manner. 
Why? Because we've surmised that executing 10-year deals for Call of Duty is going to require constant regulation. Why? Because imagine this scenario. Okay, Microsoft knows that their cloud gaming stint is trash. They told CMA that. They said, we don't feel like our cloud gaming stint is good enough right now. So what do they do? They give out 10-year deals everywhere to allow you to play Call of Duty on better platforms. What does that do? That gives your mouth watering for Call of Duty in the cloud. And as cloud gaming starts to maturize, people love the experience of playing Call of Duty in the cloud on uh, services like GFN, Luna, wherever it may be, Ubitus, wherever. Then year 11, they yank it off those services and now you're forced to only go to xCloud and play it. Right? What is that reminiscent of? That's reminiscent of Disney Plus. When Disney Plus, you know, allowed Netflix, because they weren't ready, allowed Netflix for years to to make uh, Netflix uh, uh, exclusive content based upon their IPs. Uh, based upon their properties, particularly Marvel. And then when Net, when Disney Plus was ready, they yanked everything off of Netflix and said, now nah, we're going to do it. And it caused a massive flood over to Disney Plus. Now, a lot of you may hear that and say, well, MM2K, what's wrong with that? You know what's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with it on the Disney Plus side because they already own the IP. What if Disney didn't own Star Wars? And they said, and they were allowed to buy Star Wars while it was already on Netflix. And then they said, okay, you can only play it on Netflix for 10 years. And then year 11, we'll decide what we're going to do. And then year 11, they decide to yank it off of Netflix and then put it on Disney+. Plus. Now you've taken some, and then let's just say if it was not only on Netflix, but it was on uh, I, um, other other streaming services, right? Hulu, whatever. This is a common multi-plat IP, Star Wars, that's everywhere. Now, I'm and I'm going to continue to leave it multi-plat. I'll put it on a few more services, but year 11, I'm going to yank it. I'm going to do something that's uncommon to the market when it comes to this high elevated IP that means so much to the market and potentially could lift up cloud gaming. Now I'm going to yank it and make it exclusive to myself. If Microsoft already owned the IP, it would be a different discussion. But because the IP is already multi-plat, available freely in the market pretty much, CMA has documentation that they were working on deals to make it free elsewhere. In particular, we know about rumors and, 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 and mummering about them working with Stadia to eventually put Call of Duty on Stadia. Why? Because they just signed a big deal for there to be cloud backend support for Call of Duty. That was a huge deal for Google. And within those discussions, they were continuing to have conversations about when and particularly when they would put it on Stadia and why it would be lucrative for both parties. So that's just one deal we know about. Now we got also NVIDIA GeForce Now who was who's killing it now, who would really opposite of Stadia, above Stadia would be the best place to play Call of Duty. But the NVIDIA GeForce Now ultimate, once Bethesda was purchased by Microsoft and Project Orion was snatched from the jaws of access from Stadia, NVIDIA GeForce Now Ultimate was going to be the, the, the prime way to play competitive games like that in the cloud. So the best place to play Call of Duty was going to be NVIDIA GeForce Now. And NVIDIA GeForce Now was doing an excellent job of bringing Call of Duty, no, well not Call of Duty, but all the games like Call of Duty that abandoned the platform when they went retail, they're bringing, they're, they're bringing them back to the platform. And again, in that CMA documentation, there likely was conversations between uh, xCloud and I mean, between uh, Call of Duty and, and um, GFN. Hold on one second.
All right, sorry about that, y'all. I'm coming back. Uh, all right, so we uh, again. I'm, I'm in about 25 minutes if I'm not done. Which let me hurry up, start stop bloviating. If I'm not done in 25 minutes, then what I'm gonna uh, we're gonna have another intermission. I just gotta let this this delivery come in. All right, so we were talking about. Um, excuse me, what CMA's uh, outlook of this was. And again, I gave you, I gave you a prime example using, um, um, you know, what Microsoft can potentially do with these 10 year deals. If Microsoft already owned this property, then it would be like Disney plus. They don't already own this. We already see in the console market. And this, this is the thing that to take into consideration where I was having a discussion again with somebody great, you know, seemed like very well intended individual, but I, I don't think they were looking at this from 5,000 feet. And again, it doesn't make me smarter than them or whatever. It's just, I feel like that due to a lot of people's lack of experience with the cloud community and, and cloud gaming in general, there's a lot of things that they, that they, they, they overlook. The CMA ruled that every CMA and EU ruled, and I'm not sure where FTC stands on this, but the CMA and EU ruled that um, Microsoft acquiring APK does not adversely affect console gaming. They're basically saying there's enough content out there, enough activity out there in the console world where even though this will be a huge blow, to platforms that were expecting Call of Duty, that even if Microsoft yanks Call of Duty, it's not going to matter. That within itself proves that the CMA isn't trying to force Microsoft to not have exclusives or whatever. They're, the CMA is basically saying, look, even though we're not 100% sure, we don't trust you, there's been precedent before, we don't trust that you're, you're, you're going to keep your word on this. Even if you do renege, you know, it's not a requirement for, competi for competition in the market to remain thorough. You can do whatever you want with this in the console world. It's not going to hamper console gaming. This That's what the CMA is saying, right? So as big as Call of Duty is, they're saying it's not going to affect the console market, even though there has been reasonable detail out put out there showing you how big Call of Duty is. But you have a 1% nascent market who's just waiting, like, please give us this game. This game would be huge to them in contrast to the console market. You see why it's completely different? This is going to catapult console game, I mean, cloud gaming into a whole nother stratosphere. Again, I use Fortnite as an example. Fortnite is a prime example. The way Microsoft applied that and the, and, and, and the access that it was given to cloud gamers took them from last I would say in even in, in dedicated cloud usage to first. That means they leapfrogged Amazon Luna, Google Stadia, NVIDIA GeForce Now, even PlayStation Now. They leapfrogged all four of them. They went from bottom to first. Just off of Fortnite. Call of Duty is going to have similar effects. They know this man. <laughs> so that's why CMA came up with the decision that they did. All right. So now that we understand what's going on, e EU ruled in favor of the deal with contingencies, but they're allowing it to, to, to move through from their perspective. CMA has refuted it and said, look, there's flaws in the EU decision because it puts too much faith in Microsoft doing what they said they're going to do and not churning back on their word we don't trust it and as a regulatory we it's not our job to babysit microsoft and that's what we would have to do to make sure that they're continuing to not adversely affect this nascent market all right that's the that's what the decisions mean 
Now, the discussion around it, the tone of this conversation is off base, particularly for those from those that are in favor of the deal. Like, there's certain people that I trust, even though I don't agree with. I trust Clive Linden, my, my uh, uh, formerly known as my uh, <laughs> my advisor, all things Stadia, right? Clive Linden, my partner Jack. Um, dad plays games. Uh, those, those those are huge supporters of Xbox. They love X Cloud, and they want to see this deal go through. Even though I don't agree with their assessments, those are people. That's just, and there's more. Those there those are a list of people that I trust. I haven't heard everyone's conversation. Like, um, shout out to Rock. Rock has um, a great cloud gaming um, podcast. I haven't really heard Rock's take on this. You know what I'm saying? But from those that I have heard um, that I haven't agreed with, I've, I've heard them pivot from the facts. Those are people that I trust. That being said, there are those that I don't trust who are trying to frame this in a way like this turns xbox's position upside down and now gives them an advantage um no let me give you an example those that are familiar with basketball basketball is not a real hard concept to understand let's just say by the time the third quarter starts because there's four quarters in a basketball game. In, 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 a, in a professional basketball game, there's four quarters. By the time the fourth, the third quarter starts, you're down by 40 points. Being down by 40 points, in most cases, the game is over at any juncture. But let's just say, but there has been they have there have been comebacks. It's possible. From from that steep down. But beginning of third quarter, you're down by 40 points. Let's say by the beginning of fourth quarter, the final quarter, you, you, you're you down by 30 points. You shaved it 10 points. You didn't secure a big victory by only shaving it down 10 points. You're still 30 points down come fourth quarter. That, the odds are still heavily against you. That is the proper tone for where Xbox is at right now. They did. This was not a shot in the arm for the deal. This is more of they dodged a bullet by EU, you know, approving the deal. So again, the proper tone is not, oh, we got a shot in the arm. Our chances have heavily improved. No. They are still as they are were when CMA blocked it. And there's a lot of people that are saying, well, you know, EU's decision is going to throw CMA. I'm going to show you why that's a farce. Let me go to somebody that does know what they're talking about. And that's Cloud Gaming's very own Purple Haze. Now, and, I, and I referred to Dad Plays Games. We, we've been having a discussion about this. I put that, my, my tweet that I put out there. Um, Dad Plays Games put his synopsis out there. And again, like I said, he comes at it from a different angle than I have. Um... And Purple Hay says, I'll be listening to the aforementioned Clive who did a show yesterday. And I was able to catch a little bit of it, but something happened and I wasn't able to catch all of it yet. She said, I'll be listening to Clive's take to see what he thinks. Overall, I'm still not convinced the deal goes through and the EU signaled they would allow this deal to go through when they accepted the remedies for review. Why am I showing Purple Haze and why am I referring to what she has to say? Because even beyond me, Purple Haze is the only person that said that CMA is going to block this deal. They're going to block it because of the cloud. I just said cloud gaming is going to play a significant portion of the deal. And I surmise that the, the remedies are going to require Amazon Luna getting the deal. Stadia's out of the mix. But Google got remedied somewhat through Upidus getting a deal because now that's their first partner in the whole Google Cloud Gaming, Cloud for Gaming for Cloud, whatever the hell it's called. 
So there's somewhat remedy. But Amazon Luna is going to have to get a deal. That was my argument. Purple Haze took it a step further and said, yo, I don't, I don't think CMA is going past this. Because because of the cloud and she got viciously attacked and when the CMA decision came out she was watching people lick their fingers from all the crow that they had to eat (laughs) she was making omelets off the egg on their faces This is somebody that understands the sector, that understands the market. I had a very, and again, another example of diversity of thought, having very adverse uh, uh, lines of thought when it comes to something in relation to cloud gaming, but still pivoting off the facts and, and creating a great conversation. See my interview with Purple Haze, where she interviewed me. There was something she was like, look, MM2K, I'm gonna put you on the spot, bucko. I don't like this, that, and the other. And we made uh, differentiating arguments, but they were all pivoting off the facts. Very entertaining conversation to say the least. Great conversation. That's what I'm talking about. If you're not listening to people like Purple Haze, I don't want to hear what you got to say, period. Shut the hell up. There's so many pundits out there, so many journos out there. Like, for instance, Tom Warren. Tom Warren's still mad at me. He's mad. Like, Tom Warren said, what did he say here? He said this. And the shot again, shout out to Watchman's Collective for putting this out there and showing me this. But Tom Warren wanted to point out there, um, he, he thinks that CMA has overstated Microsoft 60, 70%. I mean, I know he's just, he's just regurgitating the stuff, but he's doing it with a purpose. It don't matter if EU thinks that CMA has overstated it unless they got conclusive proof. And they they shot their conclusive proof in the foot by saying, for us, it's not a separate market. That's the thesis of why they think it's overstated. It's not a separate market. Huh? You tell that to the dozens of analysts like NASDAQ who say, this is a separate market. It's a nascent market. It's a growing market. But the CAGR is so sky high on this. This is a separate market. You tell NASDAQ that. Ain't nobody paying attention to the EU, man. What is you talking about? 60, 70% is overestimated because it's a separate market. Them separate market days are over, EU. And it makes me question. People are always talking about this colluding with Sony and CMA. Y'all sound a little bit similar to me with X2 with Xbox. I'll talk about that later. Some don't jive with me, man. That being said. If you're not listening to people like Purple Haze that know what they're talking about, that have a proven track. I don't care about all the isms, schism, jisms, and flisms that you throw out there. I don't care about that crap. I want to know your track record. Does what you spill out come to fruition? If it doesn't, shut the hell up. Y'all caught up in the isms, schisms, bisms. I don't care what these legal hacks have to say. What is their track record? Uh-oh, let me see something. Is that is that the delivery person? Let's check it out. No. Back door. I got to look. Okay. No, no delivery person yet. Okay. All right, so the CMA has pressure on them from uh, EU is false. And people are saying that this thread is an indication of that. No, 
I think what the CMA, and if you understand regulators, which a lot of you don't, I've worked with regulators one-on-one. If you understand their culture, they are proud. They, they peacock their decision-making. You could call it arrogance or whatever, like I'm right. And they want to let you know where they stand. I'm right. So what they do is they say, you know what? We, you, you can come to whatever conclusion you want. And you can sit there and tap dance with, with, with Microsoft all you want. I ain't going, you know, I ain't going, I, I ain't going to suggest nothing. I'm just going to say you are wrong. We right. When you understand the regulator culture, this doesn't send up, oh, they're afraid, they're scared. Just like y'all told us when, by Jim Ryan making the arguments that he did, that it just proved that there was no argument against the deal and CMA blocked it. <laughs> Shut the hell up! So, again, stop listening to these people that have agendas that don't know what they're talking about. And you got to be concerned with misinformation spreading out there, right? You got to be very concerned about it. Um, here, I put this out here. I said, most of my hopeful APK deal friends claim that EU will make CMA look weak in tribunal. Bunal. Most don't understand the tribunal don't dispute merits of CMA's decisions, but hey, also, how in the world would that be the case being this EU's foresight on the Xbox deals? And the EU, in their approval of the Xbox deal, says this, cites this, says, the platform holder would not have the incentive to cease or limiting Zenimax games available for purchase on raffle consoles. <laughs> Shut the hell up! Now, I want to give a shout out to Watchmen Collective because we had a great conversation, great person. Shout out to you, my friend. I really appreciate what you did. And, and again, even though we disagree, I think our thread is an example of how you can disagree, but still, you know, hold a cordial conversation. So he put out a lot of points out there that suggest why he felt like that the, uh, the CMA was wrong and, you know, they, they made procedural issues. And, and, and I rebutted back. And I said, this is the same because I've been dealing with this. The same regurgitated jargon that comes from the legal hacks that 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 uh, um, that are all over Twitter, right? Um, and he asked me, he says, "Where is your 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 law degree?" Right? And I said, "Okay." I said, "Well, I just showed you where there's flaws in your analysis. You know, one in particular where he was referring to um, the CMA." counting all game pass subscriptions that's false again why is that false because cma clearly states that they're only counting paid for cloud um access they got numbers from xbox gfn stadia from everybody that's where their mau numbers come from and if they were just if they were just simply counting xbox or x I mean, or, or, or game pass usage then the percentages would have been higher than 60 70 percent they would have been extremely high in 2021 and even higher in 2021 they would have been like 98 percent and in 2022 it would have been 99.99999 percent they're only counting paid for cloud access when you separate the paid for cloud access for the video GeForce Now, it's not the same numbers that you see on the internet when you do a Google search. That's why I say you guys are flawed and just listening to these legal hacks. You don't know, you don't understand what's going on here. Please go to cloud dosage.com. Please.
things, I promise you. You won't just hear my rhetoric. You'll hear from people that actually support the deal, but they'll give you the facts. So in response to our good friend Watchmen's Collective, I said, I just showed you again, I reiterated the flaws in his assessment of Game Pass. And I said, um, I said, you know, you're just regurgitating stuff from legal hacks who don't understand cloud gaming, don't understand the culture of these regulators, just legal proceedings. A, I co-own a website, which is a staple for cloud gamers. I've been in the center of that community since 2020. Cloud dosage, right? Uh... What else did I say? Hold on. Where, where I said, um, also, I have 25 years plus experience, Fortune 500, testifying in cases and providing depositions on behalf of said company, which is true. I always, you've heard me regurgitate that a lot as of late. Um, and then I've helped influence critical uniform commercial code for the public, for certain sectors of the public. Yes, I have. Um, I also dealt with regulators one-on-one. -on -one. I've had the cringing experience on multiple occasions of having to communicate with regulators one-on-one -on -one who were investigating something in relation to our company from a consumer. Not a good feeling. So I said, I'm glad you're reading others' opinions, but I have the experience. Hence why I've correctly guessed Cloud's impact, uh, what concessions would look like when the people you are clung to were dumbfounded. I will, again, I really appreciate Watchman's collective. My ire is to the people that are misleading those. Nothing wrong with wanting a deal to go through, but just be educated on the actual likelihood and standings. Like, look, get off of Twitter, bro. And just go watch CNBC. CNBC is another group. They're a business group. They wanted this deal to go through, but they're being realistic about the probabilities of it. They're not doing this pie in the sky, analyzing and, 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 uh, um, tap dancing and wood buffing that these journos and a lot of these content creators are doing too. And if you don't understand what the truth is, here's the truth. I mean, we can end the podcast on this really because people wanted to, to cite Reuters, which again, shout out to um, uh, Internet of Games. Let me see if I can find his comment. Damn. Y'all going off in this chat, man. He put his comment back up here where he says Reuters has a 95% uh, truth and accuracy rating. This is the highest rating of any mainstream news agency. So, you know, I like to frequent in, in, in some console war stuff here and there just to make fun of people that are overzealous. When I saw that Reuters said this deal is going through, I, I, I left it alone. <laughs> I left it alone. Here's what Reuters has to say. What's next for Microsoft 69 billion Activision deal after UK ban, right? So they say, is the deal dead? Not necessarily. Microsoft said it remained fully committed and would appeal. The regulator's decision reflected a flawed understanding of the market, they said. That's, of course, that's Microsoft's thing. But how does the appeal process work? This whole CAT thing with the tribunal that everybody is telling you is going to flip everything on its head. Listen to some critical parts. Microsoft can appeal through the CAT, an independent judicial bottle, which only examined the CMA's decision making process, not the merits of the merger. Microsoft will not be able to offer new remedies at this stage, such as offering to keep Activision's content off its game, Xbox Game Pass, a subscription service for Xbox users in Britain, as some analysts have suggested. That's a direct shot at Michael Dumbass Pactor, who don't know what the hell he's talking about. If you're listening to him, like we've been telling you, stop it. He's doing this for the clicks. Reuters just called him out right here. Hold on one second. I think that's my delivery truck. Hold on. Yeah, they're here. So I'm gonna just wait for them. Uh, matter of fact, let me go, let me go talk to him right now. I'll be right back. Give me, give me about five minutes, y'all. I know it's getting juicy. <laughs>
Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> I had to run all the way down the street um, because he was parked down the street because he's bringing his stuff off a big truck. All right, so um, we were talking about Reuters. And er again, everybody wants to uh, cite Reuters and talk about how prestigious they are and how they were right in guessing <coughs> what's going on with uh, the APK decision from EU. So if we're going to do that, then what we have to do is uh, we have to consider, again, their insight on what this deal means. Let's go back to it. Let's read it again. How does the appeal process work? It will only examine the CMA's decision-making process, not the merits of the merger. Microsoft will not be able to offer new remedies at this stage, such as offering to keep Activision content off its Xbox Game Pass, a subscription service for Xbox users in Britain, as some analysts suggest. That's a direct shot at Michael Pactor. Michael Crackpot Pactor. Direct shot. Again, and I'm not mad at Michael Pactor. He's you, you know, he's saying all this stuff. His track record is abysmal and he shouldn't be listened to. But you guys continue to listen to him. Can you blame him <laughs> at some point in time? Like, you know, it's like going down the dark alley and getting bitten by a dog. And you're like, oh, man, I got bit by a dog. That's a shame. They should have the dog chained up or whatever. But how many times you got to walk down that same alley, get bit by the dog before it's your fault? Like, look at Pactor's track. It's, it's a meme on the internet. It's a meme. All right. Also, more importantly, the CAT will not engage with the merits of the CMA's decision or conduct a wholesale review of the party's evidence. So all of you that are saying, oh, look, uh, EU makes CMA's arguments or evidence flawed. And that's that's not that's not going to happen here at the CAT. They will not engage with the merits of the CMA's decision or conduct a wholesale review of the party's evidence. All right. So what's next? Microsoft must appeal, which they've done by May 24th. The CAT aims to deal with straightforward cases in under nine months, which they I mean they're they're, they're taking this deal. They're going to look at this. The tribunal will return. Okay, what happens if Microsoft wins the tribunal appeal? This is what happens. The tribunal will simply return the case to the regulator for further review. Microsoft then can offer new concessions. So Microsoft will be able to offer a new concession that could appease the CMA only if the CAT punts it back. And the CAT is only going to punt it back if they feel like there's some illegal activity, like, come on, or there's something procedurally wrong and something that was definitive in their decision making. So one of the biggest things that are being routinely regurgitated, again, from Tom Warren in particular, who doesn't understand is this whole 60 to 70 percent of the market type thing right and, and they miscalculated that i don't think 60 owning 60 70 percent of the market was the definitive factor in why cma made their decision Because, look, it could have been Amazon Google. I mean, damn, Amazon Google. <laughs> it could have been Google Stadia or Google for the sake of Stadia, who at best had, what, 5 to 10% of the market in 2021? It could have been Google Stadia who wanted to buy ABK. And they still would have said no. I think the 60 to 70% just 
was help was helping to illustrate how detrimental this would be to the market. But when you look at CMA's overall argument, the focus isn't so much on Microsoft's percentage of the market now. It's based upon the fact that owning Call of Duty and not having a fathomable way for that to remain accessible to your competitors when it's, you know, the format that it's in now is an already accessible IP and has been since inception. That's going to harm the market and competition and sway things too much in the favor of one entity. And they just use the 60 to 70% to show how much, but whether it was 60, 70%, zero to 5%, it was going to do it too much for any one entity. That's what the CMA's argument is. So even if they procedurally calculated to 60 to 70% wrong, where I don't think they have again, um, they they got more than enough uh let me see if i can find it because I, I already had this conversation with our good friend um uh what's his name of tweet uh derek strickland of tweak town he was coming to the same assessment let me see if i can find it let's go here let's see if i can find it replies okay come on 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 uh Let's see. I'm going to see if I can find it. I should have bookmarked it. Did I, did I, no, I didn't bookmark it. Examples. Crap. Oh, here it goes. Uh, copy. I'm going to bookmark this because this should be bookmarked for future use. This was a great conversation. Huh? Uh, no, what, what is going on here? Copy link to tweet. Okay. Do this. All right. And then now we're going to bookmark this because this was a great conversation. For, and Derek is again, another one that don't get all sour. He got to check his pH balance and see if he needs to clean himself off with something. No, nah, I ain't gonna say that. Let me <laughs> let me stop. Let me stop. I ain't gonna go it on, bro. I, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave Tom Warren alone. Tom Warren, like Paul Tassie, Derek Strickland. Even though we disagreed, and I and, and, and I came back at and I can't, I didn't come back at Derek like hard. Even though I, I think his synopsis of this is 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 off. I don't think that he's doing anything egregious. I just think that he you know his view of it is is misguided. But uh, okay, whatever. I had a misguided view over Google's um, penchant to stick with Stadia. Okay, it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, Paul Tassi, I came at hard. That's my bro. I, I got mad respect for Paul Tassi. Tom Warren, either, I, stop it. Get over your feelings, Tom. Anywho, um, I want to show you guys something. That totally contradicts uh, uh, what he's saying that I pointed out to Derek. Uh, let's see here. All right. So Derek, in his assessment of this document, he says, uh, he says, um, he says, circling back to go over CMA's cloud determinations, I found what looks like the CMA admitting they cannot separate xCloud data on a standalone basis. And he highlights his, while it's not possible to determine how many xCloud users would xCloud would have as a standalone service, the evidence described above the cloud gaming attracts users to Xbox Game Pass, and that is a significant portion of what users will be willing to be pay extra for it. And he, misre he misunderstood that. So I said, hey, look, looked at the entries in reference. To me, it appears what they're saying about X. And oh, no, there was one more entry that he had. Uh, let me see here if I can find it. Following that, he shows the table, the 60% table, the 70% table. And he says, we use data from Microsoft and third-party cloud gaming service providers to you to compute shares of supply and cloud gaming service. So they asked Microsoft for the data 
They said, we use data from Microsoft. They asked Microsoft for data and they got it. That's what that means. They, they, they didn't do what me and you do. Search Google. They don't have to do that. They are the CMA. So they got the data from Google, from Microsoft, and, and they made their computations. So what I told Derek is, look, I think your assessment is flawed. I said, to me, it appears that they're saying about xCloud data is, we have asked for and likely will provide details on pings and usage type xCloud has received. We didn't use free tier data, Microsoft, GFN stated for market share purposes, which again, I feel like, leans too much in the favor of xCloud because xCloud via Fortnite, they're making money off of that, off their free tier, but we'll leave that alone. We too, we do have the data that suggests cloud only gamers use get Xbox Game Pass for that purpose only primarily. How do I know that? Well, because Satya Nadella has told you that look, they've shown you that we can, we can, we can derive specific data. They told you we had 20 million people who have used the service to date uh, on over 6,000 types of devices. Microsoft is my, they have endless data. They can provide that and they did. So they were able to tell what gamers specifically were using xCloud. Not what gamers specifically have Game Pass, but who was using xCloud. What they couldn't tell what they were saying in this document was we can't, if xCloud was its own separate entity, we can't say that these same people for sure would use xCloud, but that's here nor there. That's the business model that Microsoft chose. And it's really a smart one if you want to grow your cloud saturation, because even to people that who are not initially and enthralled in cloud gaming, you add it to something that they're already going to use and that makes them want to try to see if it's worth it. It's, it's the, it's the business decision that they made. So really it's, it's flaw of a fraud and I won't say fraudulent, but it's flawed that the EU says, Oh no, it's not a separate market. It, no, it is a separate market and you can't give Microsoft the benefit of the doubt because that's how they ex dis um, decided to expose its mainstream to this nascent market. It was a smart business move. It just happens that it may not help them in this cause, but that's the business decision that they made. So CMA got it right, man. And you know this, man. So we had to point this out to, 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 to Derek. However, we can't confirm how much usage would there, again, like I just said, theoretically exist if xCloud was a standalone service. But here is the proof that Xbox could provide specific usage data. You got Santi Nadell out here jumping and tap dancing to how well it's doing. That's more than enough proof. Okay? End of story. Simply put, creators are failing you. They're making it seem like that this is now a 50-50 chance. They're making it seem like there's some fraudulent activity that is amiss. If anything, I think you can reasonably conclude that maybe there's some, some fuddy duddy stuff going on between Microsoft and, and, and EU. What am I talking about? Here you go. Brad Smith's comments as soon as the EU passed it. The European Commission has required Microsoft to, li to license popular Activision Blizzard games automatically to, to competing cloud gaming services. This will apply globally and will empower millions of consumers worldwide to play these games on any device that they choose. Okay, that's Brad Smith and Microsoft. What did Margaret v Vestager say? With, with our clearance, um, Activision Blizzard's games will also be available on the cloud. This is a this is good for competition and innovation as it brings games to many more devices and consumers. Huh? What? That that sounds too airily familiar. 
Microsoft's commitments will enable this st the streaming of games in any cloud gaming streaming server. Now notice how she said any. I ain't seen Amazon Luna with a deal. I have not seen Amazon Luna with a deal. Any cloud streaming service. So you could make the argument that EU prematurely gave Microsoft the benefit of the doubt and is being too soft-handed and allowing the deal to go through on their end expecting microsoft to now, now again i get that there's contingencies involved in all that other stuff but did, again didn't microsoft already tell y'all that uh where's that at didn't they already say that um that uh, uh they had no incentive right there was no incentive Then they said there was no incentive. The platform holder would have no incentive to cease or not, not, not that they told you, but didn't you surmise that the platform holder would have no incentive to cease or limit making Zenimax games available. And you were wrong there. That's, that's kind of peculiar. I'll be right back guys. All right, we're back. So the assessments are flawed from the EU. So even if what everybody was trying to suggest that the EU's argument has, well, number one, let's, let's, let's recap. Let's recap, because again, they want to caveat information when it's to their, to, to their benefit. Sorry for that mic hit. Let's, let's go over the major points that Reuters, the same, oh, Reuters, they, they, they never miss. Like the same thing they said about uh, Redfall, right? And Arcane. They never miss. Reuters never misses. What Reuters, what Reuters have to say? How does the appeal process work? We'll only examine the CMA's decision-making process, not the merits of the merger. We'll not be able to offer, Microsoft will not be able to offer remedies at this stage, such as offering to keep Activision content off Game Pass, you know what I'm saying, uh, out of UK, like m dummy Michael Pactor said. Or uh, can I call Michael Pactor a dummy? No, because he's still employed and you continue to listen to him. So who's the dummy? The CAT will not engage with the merits of the CMA's decision or conduct a wholesale review of the party's evidence. So they're not going to sit there and say, well, you said this. Or, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, they're not going to do that. All right. What happens if Microsoft wins? They will return the case to the regulator for further review. They'll sit there. If they find something procedurally awry, they're going to turn it back to CMA and say, uh, we feel like that, you know, there's something that is procedurally wrong here. And, and that's the crux of your assessment. Here, take a look at this. This, this appears that's the need to readjusting, right? And... That's it. 
<laughs> and again, when you talk to the experts that Reuters talk to, quote, the likelihood is that without a material change in circumstances or new evidence, new evidence, not oh somebody else looked at the same evidence and said this new evidence, the CMA is most likely to reach the same conclusion as it did the first time around. So they'll just fix whatever it is if in, in the unlikely fashion that CAT bounces his back. They're just going to fix whatever it is procedurally and they're going to keep the same ground and bounce it back to CAT, bounce it back or just bounce it back to Microsoft who will then try to go to CAT again. And this time CAT is going to say, nope, looks good to us. And this original review if there's any problems, CAT is going to look over the entire deal off of the procedural merits. If there was anything illegal or awry happening and they're going to identify it all there. So as long as CMA remedies that and they bounce it back, it's over. There is a small remote chance. Again, Microsoft is down 30 points in the fourth quarter, the beginning of the fourth quarter. It's not impossible. Highly unlikely, yes. There is a chance that Microsoft, once if it gets bounced back from the unlikelihood, again, you got to understand what's going on, from the unlikelihood that is rejected back from CAT, if that happens, then Microsoft then can approach CMA and say, okay, look, we try to... You know, we, we, we've been we've been greasing the palms of EU <laughs> and we gave them this this sucker fear deal that they accepted. They lapped it all up and we realize it's not going to work for you. We are willing to go even further. Here's what we're willing to do. If they're willing to do something like that, that would, again, be the the the, the kaboom thing that would, would change the dynamic without that the dynamic it will not be changed okay so as long as CA, cma who has their definitive decision as long as they're blocking it this is microsoft down 30 points in the fourth quarter instead of being still being down 40 that's all they did they shaved a massive underdog situation they shaved it down to where it's a little less massive but it's still massive that is the proper way the proper perspective to have about this now again I don't even believe the whole Microsoft is palming the hands of EU I don't believe that but I threw that out there to combat the idiot herd out there that is suggesting that happened with CMA and Sony. Or the idiot herd that's trying to suggest that FTC and CMA are colluding. No. What is the incentive? Because there are those that are like, this is illegal. Because you heard Microsoft say it. Microsoft said it because in advance, they have a bunch of lawyers and PR people that say, okay, that plan things out in advance. They know they've already, pre they already pre-planned the scenario, even though I don't think they believed it was gonna happen. They already pre-planned the scenario of the CMA um, blocking the deal. If CMA blocks the deal, we're automatically here. Here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to go to the C. We're going to go to the tribunal, and uh, once we go to the tribunal, these are the merits that they're going to look at. So let's go and say these things publicly. You know, to to, to try to give us. sub influence with the CAT here's the problem with that um, as I these European regulators like there's a lot of political hoopla that happens in the states that affects 
at times the decision making in the states. You know, even though Lena Khan is like she's not buckling the pressure. But you will have people from that sector buckle from pressure. She's not going to do it. She's been abundantly clear. But that's the states. This doesn't happen in Europe. (laughs) So unless you got some illegal deal with somebody and your greasing and palms behind the hand, you know, it, to, for them to do something to, to, you know, give give us a, you know, we'll give you a hundred million dollars if you vote in our favor, or we're gonna we're gonna off your family. They're gonna be swimming with the fishes if you don't vote in our favor. Unless you got something like that going on, you can't use court of public opinion to persuade European uh, regulators. It doesn't work, and this is where. Microsoft is going to fall flat on her face if this continues to be their approach. Again, not my belief that any of them are doing anything shady. They're make, making decisions based upon how they feel that they need to be made. Even though I don't de- agree with the EU, I don't feel like they're doing anything shady. EU CMA FTC has shown enough independent reaction individuality and a penchant for handling markets the way they feel justly quote unquote to where belief that any of them are colluding is bogus you really have to show it but again I put that example up there just to show how two can play at that game we, we can say the reverse about EU I mean, it's, it's fraudulent, but it, it, we could say it. I mean, look at it. Out of the three major regulators, two of them are coming up with the same assessment, and only one of them is it. And 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 and, and the, the rhetoric from both the, the regulator and Microsoft is very similar. I mean, again, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, oh, what's her name? Marguerite Vestager. Not it wasn't necessarily this tweet. She was interviewed very soon after Brad Smith gave his comments on Twitter. It eerily mo- uh, um, mimicked what Brad Smith had to say. Eerily. I don't have that recording on me. Go check out Clive. He, you know, he he played it. It eerily was similar to what Brad Smith had to say. It's eerie. Does it mean anything? No. But again, if I would if I wanted to play dumb dumb the dummy cuz I didn't get in my way, I could sit there and make a case just like people are trying to make the case that CMA CMA is is colluding with somebody. It's stupid. And now to the final assessment. All this is smoke and mirrors. As a gamer, none of you are paralegals. None of you have stock in Microsoft. None of you are getting a paycheck from Microsoft. I can't speak for every creator that's out there. I don't know what their agenda is or what their incentive is, but you're not them. Microsoft just spent $8 billion to buy Bethesda, a company that used to make games, you know what I'm saying, in the 90s that were rated in the 90s, and then Arcane Studios directly you know, always made critically acclaimed games. Games were 80 and above, right? They just gave you a game that's a 57 right now. The leadership told you that when they assessed this game, it was double digits higher. Microsoft has not provided you a triple A genre defining action game in Lord knows how long. And we all know that genre defining AAA action games is what's staring the market right now. And no matter where you go, hell, you can even go to go to uh, Nintendo and argue that you're getting that more than you're getting it from Microsoft. They haven't provided you with such in over a decade. 
I don't think this is important enough to be focused on. What you need to be focused on is um, what you need to be focused on. And I see your comment, Cold Blood. I'm about to get to it. What you need to be focused on is this game, sh- this this show that's coming up in June, and how Starfield lands. That's it. <clears throat> I wouldn't even be worried about Activision Blizzard. You're down. When it comes to that, you're down 30 points in the fourth quarter. This is game seven. (laughs) You're down 30 points in the fourth quarter in game seven. It's a wrap, essentially. Don't take your eyes off the prize. You applied the heat to Microsoft. They felt it. Ensure they keep feeling it until they do better. It's like a child you put on punishment because they did something egregiously wrong and they knew better. You're supposed to be on punishment for the whole weekend. And they come to you and they say, look, mommy. Look, daddy. I made this origami bird. While I was on punishment and you go look at the bird and they're like, oh, you're like, oh my God, this is great. This is awesome. This, you're so smart. Oh my goodness. And you're sitting there staring at the bird and they just go put on their coat and their shoes and they, they go outside and play <laughs> like they ain't on punishment. That's essentially what's happening when you sit there and fall for the smoke and mirrors and still stay, stay focused on this deal who Reuters is telling you, not me. Reuters is telling you is a long shot now that CMA blocked it. Stop it. You need to be worried about Bethesda, this showcase, and Starfield. That's it. Microsoft paid $8 billion and they charged you $70 for the first game that came from Bethesda and it's a 57. What the hell are you doing? What is wrong with your brains? Stop being so damn stupid and gullible. Wake the hell up. This is idiocy. Wake up. That's my assessment. That's it from your boy. Let me go to my brother Cold Blood Sensei in the chat. He says, Lulu is best girl. Don't you agree, Mo? She keeps the ponies in check and gives bots and mascot circus full of clowns. Again, it's that smoke and mirrors. Lulu and company are coming out there. Hey, with the with the origami bird. They supposed to be on punishment. But you're just sitting there. Oh, this you're so smart. Oh, I knew, I know it, I know it. And you're, you and you and the you and your the, the other parent is so focused on the bird. They they say, okay, all right, you distracted. Let me go get my my boots, my jacket. I'm going outside. And they go outside. <laughs> no one they need to, their ass should be in the room. They're on punishment. Y'all are never gonna get better, and I don't feel bad for y'all. I really don't. This ain't even about battling the ponies and all the other stuff. Who cares? Cold Blood and Sensei and I agree that PlayStation ain't putting its best foot forward with only one uh, uh, first party game this year. No, they're they're kind of taking their foot off the gas. But why are they even doing that? Because they don't feel a threat from you and they shouldn't. But that's not good for us gamers. So we definitely want Microsoft to do better, to keep PlayStation honest. And so both of y'all can flow with genre-defining AAA games. Y'all can keep it flowing if y'all compete. But I will argue as consumers, y'all ain't doing y'all part. Y'all, y'all getting too confused and too distracted by the origami bird. Microsoft needs to be on punishment until they do better. You ain't doing your job as consumers all right let's go let's y'all been killing it in chat i'm gonna read all y'all ch- golly um 
And I'm going to put that common back up there because from Cold Blood Sensei because I think it's important. Um, let me see. Jesus Christ. Are we at Paul Game Forever in the house? What's up, bro? I don't know if you're still here. Hopefully you are. Yeah, put all these comments up here. I hate this platform because it's not the best. Um, oh, yeah, and if anybody is watching this and you have access to Amazon Prime, um, you and you haven't gift you can give you can gift a free sub to this channel. I feel like we do a lot of great content for you guys. We break things down in a way that nobody else is doing it out here. Um, so, you know, feel free to uh, please hit that subscribe button and gift us your free subscri subscription gift uh, via, via via being an Amazon Prime subscriber. It doesn't cost you a thing and it goes a long way to help out the platform. All right. So let's let's do this. First, I want to you know, let's let's play. Uh, talk about post ups takes laugh out loud yeah um I'm, I'm bringing that back up there yeah so as you can see again i'm proud of my brother post up I'm, I'm very proud that he's learning something i've been there twice like i said earlier in the show i've been there when i had to go to the law library learn how to you know make some contracts independent upon my business uh i mean independent of my work um i did it again when it came to cloud gaming having to learn about cloud gaming um regardless but I made sure that I always got a well-rounded education, okay? Um, that's what's lacking here. That's why people's hopes are being put up here. Uh, don't fall into that same pit, y'all, okay? Uh, let's, we got Sean L. He says, hey, yo. <laughs> He's laughing by his off. It says, I said it. Okay, and I read that from um, Internet of Games. Shout out to Internet of Games. I agree. Three years of, of advanced learning. Uh, said post up is best for <laughs> Uh, what else we got here? Them drug dealers interrupting the stream. Uh, w w what's going on? Oh, uh, oh, you talking? Oh, he said the drug dealers, the people that was bringing my package. He says, yeah, congratulations on that one K. Thank you very much, Internet of Games. And cloud gaming is losing its stigma, and once that's gone, nobody's afraid. After that, behavioral modification is tough without totalitarian controllers. So, le le legitimizing is key. This legitimizing big time. Yeah, yeah. CMA did did a, did a huge boost to cloud gaming. Power of the cloud is still top three biggest lives of Xbox. <laughs> well, the way they was assessing it, absolutely yes. Um, by again, didn't they show up what X Cloud was gonna be? This is they market. This is they marketed Fortnite very strictly. The images on it on mobile phones because you are reading that article on a mobile phone and you click through. Yeah, they, they did a fantastic job. I can't take it from Microsoft. They did a fantastic job on mobile. It was fantastic. Uh, later you find out it works at home too and you got a dopamine then you're an ex exactly exactly iog that's what happened they're like hold on this is working i thought cloud gaming sucked oh snap let me go home like iog says and let me try x cloud via the paid version and then and, and they may love it too and they're mainly playing on their phones Game over. 60-70% of the market now. It has nothing to do with it being tethered to Game Pass in entirety. They are able to see who's pinging xCloud via Game Pass. And they're separating those out. Stop falling for the stupid uh, crackpot rhetoric. EU also putting in regulatory oversight a man inside. Microsoft going to dislike the behind closed doors. UK didn't want to impinge with regulatory oversight. And bots ate it up. Yep. Shout out to Paul Games. He says the post up, Diller, Colton, etc. A bunch of dudes <laughs> ignorant about business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not going to just lay it at their feet. But Paul, I'm going to agree with you. And the reason why I make the content that I do, these guys are very ignorant about how business works. And when I say these guys, not just who you name, I'm just saying in general, they are, there, there's an ignorance across the board of how business works. And that's a shame because that's why most of these decisions are made. You got to have a halfway decent business acumen. It's important to, it's cool. I'm not going to say it's important. It's cool to know the sock chips and the, 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 the terabytes and all that other stuff. It's cool to know that stuff, but it's not essential. 
that was proven when people were sitting there on GitHub learning about the teraflops and the, and, the, and the gigawatts and all that stupid stuff and talking about you're going to see 40 to 50 frame deltas and, it, and none of it came to fruition. So it's cool to talk about the tech if you're in a nerd type of way, but is that essential to understanding what you're going to get in your hand? Nope. I don't understand most of that stuff and I still was able to tell you better than them. <laughs> Facts. Facts. Microsoft history has shown that they will not play. Not yeah, exactly. Exactly. I one of one of my term papers, Paul, was based on Microsoft, and I was a Microsoft fan because I love what they were doing with the internet, and I just couldn't see, the, you know, that like you said, the unfair practices that they were involved in, and it was exposed to me. I think I did that paper in like late. It was like ninety eight, ninety nine. I wrote that paper, and Microsoft was in it was embroiled in a lot of stuff then. You know what I mean? So yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, says, uh, <laughs> after 10 years, they will say, yeah, yep. Says it's really bad that Microsoft is trading in other people's IP. Like it's already theirs. I wonder how ABK middle management feel. Oh no, look, bro. They just want that $70 billion so they can skate. That's it. They don't care. They don't care. And sleazy Bobby Kotick, the same guy that talked years ago about charging you for cutscenes. Come on, man. Um, he says, imagine you've been an activist for 20 years and, and, and grafted your <laughs> overnight, your babies uh, being tossed around like confetti. Yeah, I mean, the developers, and again, I, I don't think they want to be with Microsoft, but especially after you, you saw how they threw Redfall under the bus, what they've done to Arcane. Oh my God, like Arcane has made several games how all of us and, and they've gradually been getting better and better and better i'm not the biggest arcane fan but they've been gradually getting better and better and better and they learned so much in doing red i mean um, um, um death loop how do you go from death loop to this how do you go from that highest penchant to this how, you know what i'm saying that highest plateau rather to this the only newfound element was microsoft they introduced the game I think they introduced the game early again because they looked in the portfolio and said, "We got, we got. Well, let's pluck something out and put it out there." And, and I, we think this is the best sale out of the entire portfolio. And they were wrong, and how well it would land. He said the drug dealers here. <laughs> he said Microsoft is down by fifty with five, five minutes left. Is that what you said? Uh, hey, you know. That would make it impossible. I won't say it's impossible. Here's what I want to say. Here's what I want to say. Here's what I think is the likely scenario. I think, no, no, no. The like, okay. Microsoft is hoping that the CAT sends it back. CMA buckles under pressure, right? And they give it to, they, they're like, oh my God. Uh, post up and, 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 and company they've they've been beating us up on Twitter <laughs> like the CMA fans this is how loopy these mugs are this is how stupid they are they think the CMA hangs out on Twitter like they pitiful asses this is how dumb they are they see we gonna make the CMA buckle under pressure on Twitter right and so the CAT is going to use the EU's decision, another jurisdiction, and to, to oversee theirs, even though they don't go over merits. And, uh, and what else did they, did they say? They will not engage in the merits of the decision. They are not going to do a, a wholesale review of the evidence. They will only examine the, the decision-making process to see if there's procedural flaws there. But they're going to use another jurisdiction's uh, evidence or their interpretation of everything. And they're going to flip it. And they're going to find some illegal practices. Like, you know, the CMA was smoking pot in the bathroom right before they came up to the decision. Right? That's what they want you to believe. 
That's going to happen. And then it's going to get sent back to CMA. And then CMA is going to be like, damn, post up. And Colt were killing me on Twitter. <laughs> So-and-so said that I'm afraid on Twitter. <laughs> this is how stupid a lot of these people that you're listening to are. And actually, the only one that's desperate is my, this is how desperate Microsoft is, is that they're going to use your Twitter fervor to try to persuade CMA. CMA don't give a damn. About what y'all saying on Twitter. As a matter of fact, just via Twitter, they just simply dropped a thread and said, just to let y'all know they don't give a damn. If you don't give a damn, hey, look, just to show they don't give a damn and we don't give a, they, they dropped this on Twitter. <laughs> to tell y'all what I, what I say, they just did a matumbo, said not in my house, and they just went to all you, you flunkies and Xbox zealots on Twitter and said, uh-uh, don't get too excited. <laughs> don't get too excited we ain't budging but Microsoft is hoping that CMA buckles under that pressure which again they don't understand the regulators and then that CMA just gives in and, and grants them the deal and therefore it leads to them having to fight FTC in the courts that's not happening here is the one percentile uh, process that could happen. CAT finds a miscalculation that they deem was heavily, you know, impacted the decision, and they send it back to CMA. They say, "Yeah, be, yeah, we, you base your decision off of this, but I don't." We, the, and, the, and the inaccuracy here is too much. It does, it, and it can't just be an argument point to help bolster the point. It has to be something that was critical to the decision. Then they send it back. Unrelated to whatever they're fixing, Microsoft then bursts through the door and be like, okay, y'all got to build deal back in y'all hands. All right, we give, uncle, we give. We got enhanced concessions. No more time limits. We're indefinitely going to make the said Activision titles the current ones we're going to make them exclusive forever Activision will act as its own entity we're going to matter of fact we're going to split Activision into two there's going to be a version there's going to be a group of within Activision that will continue to make said Activision games and then we're going to have another group of Activision that's going to be for new IP the new IP let us do what we want to do with that but the, the stuff that they're already used to from Activision will remain independent under Activision Division A Division B will make our new IP is that cool and on top of that we're going to give a deal to Amazon Luna we're gonna we're gonna allow them to, to bring it on their bring your own game service or we're gonna enter one of their channels that and, and if cma says okay now we're no longer concerned and that might influence ftc it might not influence ftc if eu and cma both reversed their decisions based upon new concessions that satisfy FTC, then I feel like the deal will pass. Because then everybody will be like, okay, we're cool. But that is the only path forward. Again, CAT does find a procedural, procedural mishap and how the decision was arrived. So they do send it back. 
unrelated to whatever CAT finds, because even if they find it just a procedural mishap, CMA has indicated in this tweet, they let the public know, and they pretty much were thumbing their nose at all the zealots. That's why they put that tweet out there. It was a thumb, it was thumbing your nose. And a lot of people were mad. A lot of the zealots that lick Microsoft's bootstraps, they were mad about that. And then they tried to, they're trying to phrase it now as CMA is worried. No, they thumb their nose at you because they know this is where you congregate. And they said, <laughs> close and slam the door. The only way that this gets reversed is when this comes back, if the small likelihood that if it comes back to CMA, Microsoft then presents new concessions. And dare I say, those new concessions must include Amazon Luna. I'm not saying if they include Amazon Luna, that's it. But I feel if they don't include Amazon Luna, they're a, they are they are nothing burger. Why do I say that? Because again, as I've been telling you, they caught wind of Microsoft's purpose of even doing main or main purpose of even doing these deals to smother out Google and Amazon. Now Google stupidly quit. They stupidly quit. That's on them. But Amazon's still around. They're going to have to give Amazon Luna a deal. Or this is going to be a nothing burger. I think then you have a pivot point of discussion if they give Amazon Luna a deal. But then that, again, that only matters if CAT bounces it back. If CAT don't bounce it back, forget it. And then that's Microsoft's fault. Microsoft, when, when, when this was being reviewed, they should have realized the gig is up. We got caught. We're still going to get this huge, massive set of IPs. We're going to get King, which is huge in mobile. We want play in mobile. All right. The gig is up. But you want to know why they didn't do it? Because Satya didn't want them to. This was a Satya thing. Why? Because the reason why Microsoft is plugging so much money into Xbox is because of the future. That's why my, Phil Spencer went out there and talked about he can't sleep at night because of Amazon and Google. Those are Microsoft, bigger Microsoft's main competitors. And again, where is Satya Nadella from? He's from the cloud space. So the biggest thing to Satya Nadella is their productivity in the cloud. And again, the biggest competitors in the cloud is Google's directly behind Microsoft. Amazon is directly ahead of them. And they want to separate themselves from the pack. And if Amazon and Google were to get a leg up in cloud gaming, which is going to have a significant role, not the main role, but a significant role in your cloud product suites and services and, and your cloud, cloud productivity in the market altogether. If that is the case, then you don't want to be in a compromising position where your cloud gaming service is way behind them. So that's why Phil Spencer was talking about, oh, I can't sleep at night. Cause Satya told him, you better not sleep at night, mofo, until we beat Amazon and Google in cloud gaming. Because this could either send Amazon further away from us or have Google overtake us possibly because Google is close to us. They're too close for comfort. And they doing all these changes with their other cloud stuff. If that's successful and they kill it in cloud gaming, that might knock us to third. That's why they refuse to give any concessions to Amazon and Google directly. They gave in to Google somewhat because Google Games for Cloud partners with Ubisoft, but they conceded there. It's like, okay, that's the biggest concession we can make. They're not getting benefited directly, but they are partially getting benefited from this 10 year deal. And we really can't see Ubisoft as being a huge player in this realm.
So it, Google's portion that they're getting at in the, on the back end isn't going to be that grand, right? However, directly giving a deal to Amazon where you are, you got to give them a free license to your games. You don't get a cut and they're benefiting from that. Yeah, it'll help your sales, but then you again are uplifting Amazon in the cloud and you don't want to do that at all. Again, you're trying to stifle Google with, with Stadia. So they're further down the pole at third and you're trying to catch play catch up to Amazon Luna. You mean you're trying to play catch up to Amazon and you're trying to stifle Luna in the process. So because of that, we understand why we're at where we're at. And I'm telling you right now, Satya, you lost here. I think ultimately in the gaming space, well, you lost. Yeah. I mean, you got two, you, you, you got two decisions to make. It comes down to this. You either say having Activision Blizzard is that awesome for you th you when it comes to this deal you either think about Xbox first which I don't think a lot of again y'all don't understand business and y'all don't realize that Sachi is not thinking about Xbox first Xbox is a catalyst is a stop it, it's Xbox is again a catalyst to Fort its competitors, just like how when Steve Ballmer and um, uh, Bill Gates wanted to use Xbox to thwart PlayStation, now Xbox is being used to thwart Amazon and Google in the cloud space. They were used before to thwart PlayStation in the living room, and again, they're being used to thwart google and amazon in the cloud space why because if they get activision blizzard and then they can at some point in time when x cloud matures or maturizes they can tether that to uh um x cloud only with call it you know tether call of duty to that only that pulls them away as far as cloud gaming is concerned that pulls them away from activision i mean from uh amazon and google significantly and that, again, that helps bolster their suite of cloud services to, again, separate them further from Google, get them closer to Amazon. So they're not doing this for Xbox. They just know from attrition, you, you know, you're going to you're going <laughs> to Xbox gamers are going to celebrate. They're going to they're going to enjoy this. But try, but believe you me, the number one reason for this is not to make Xbox better. The number one reason is to bolster its cloud position or to secure it or, you know, or to, to, you know, to either bolster or secure it, bolster it towards Amazon, secure it from Google and giving Amazon a 10 year deal impedes that tremendously. So Microsoft under Satya has to decide, you know what? We're going to do this for, um, we're going to do this for Xbox. We're, we're, we're going to do this for Xbox. I'm going to tell you another reason why Satya doesn't want to do this though. When they bought Minecraft, Minecraft was still using AWS. Let me tell you how, this is how important it is for Satya and Nadella to not want to do this deal. Just a few years ago, AWS owned, I mean, AWS was powering Minecraft. Minecraft, okay. Microsoft was having a phenomenal year. There was talks that Minecraft, I mean that that Microsoft 
um, was going to take the number one spot from Amazon in the cloud. This is how well they were doing. And they slightly lost it. Guess why? Minecraft. <laughs> Let me see. Hold on. Minecraft helps Amazon beat Microsoft in cloud. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here it goes. Uh, this story might tell it. Again, y'all don't be remembering this stuff. I'll be on it, bruh. I'll be on it. This story might give it to you in full detail. Let's let's take a look at it. CNBC. Remember, I told y'all to look at see. Check out CNBC. It says Microsoft owned Minecraft will stop using Amazon's cloud. Uh, many M Microsoft applications already use companies Azure Cloud. Mohang uses Amazon Web Service dates to 2014. It says Microsoft will stop relying on Amazon to help it run the popular Minecraft. The shift represents an obvious way Microsoft to cut back on payments to one of its toughest competitors and promote its own product. Uh, Amazon Web rules the market for public cloud infrastructure for running software from afar through vast data centers where Microsoft has been working to take share with this Azure Cloud. Azure is growing faster than many parts, many other parts of Microsoft, helping it lean less on longstanding properties, more moving more so uh, its own software to Azure. Uh, let me see here. You tell consumers, this is, that's an important consider. Let me see the use of AWS for Minecraft for a version called Realms uh, to gather and play an open world game together dates to 2014 months ago. AWS published blog posts how the Mojang how Mojang, the game developer behind Microsoft, had chosen to tap AWS for Realms. Microsoft announced that it will acquire Mojang for 2.5 billion. Says My Minecraft has since grown into world's best-selling game, two million copies, 200 million copies sold. Uh, let me see here. I'm trying to find the part. It says. There's a, oh, there's a part. Let me see if I can find it here. Microsoft takes Minecraft. Uh, well, I, I would have to use some, I, I, I don't want to take forever to search for it, but this hints towards it. But there were um, reports that Microsoft was very close that they were expecting Azure revenues to surpass uh, Luna. That's what it was. It was during a reporting period where they were um, expecting, um, let me see, uh, Azure, no, 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 AWS, outperforms Azure in revenue during quarter. Maybe maybe I'll find it during this 2020. Uh, let me see. Really catching up. Azure. This is all the Azure. This is Microsoft crushes quarterly numbers. Okay, here it goes. Uh, here goes another report. Hold on one second. Let's try. Maybe this is it. Just to just to help you guys understand what I'm saying. Here it goes. Microsoft, it says Azure, Microsoft crushes quarterly numbers as Azure chases AWS. Azure's revenue growth pace picked up during the fiscal quarter two with the cloud platform surging 62%. Since Microsoft surged past Wall Street expectations for its latest quarterly revenue by more than $1 billion, thanks to strong cloud growth, which one analyst suggests Microsoft's Azure's cloud platform is starting to close the gap with the market share. Uh, and it says uh, the summary the quarter of the quarter, which was July 20, ended December 31st. Yeah, so... This isn't the exact story I was looking for that specifically talks about Minecraft's payments 
to AWS <laughs> is what stopped Azure from overcoming AWS. But that's the reason why Sachi and it's so, so Sachi Nadella has been on a campaign to ensure that never again, never no more, never no more. Microsoft will through the cloud benefit Azure or uh, uh, benefit AWS at all. And giving a deal to Amazon Luna benefits AWS because that's what powers Luna. And they don't want to benefit Luna at all. They also don't want Google closing the gap on them. I think they conceded with that one Jupiter's deal. They didn't think that was a big deal. It was only one company. But directly giving a deal to Luna, that's more of a heartache for Satya Nadella. And Satya has to come to grips with it. Is he going to finally put Xbox first? We'll have to see. I doubt it. But I will say this, that if he does put Xbox first and gives Amazon Luna a deal, then you have grounds for a conversation to spark. But until he does, you can forget it. What did he say? He said, and that's it from your boy. He said, bring Crab Gamer and post up to debate them on the whole ABK deal BS. That'd be a show for the ages. They're not coming on here. They would not come on here. If you just saw our conversations behind the scenes, cold blood, Like here, let me give you an example. Here's what happens behind the scenes. You got one person that yah, 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 just throws a bunch of like silly accusations out there. And, and I play with them too. And I just, I just play that game with them. Yah, yah, yah. We just yell back right at each other. Just type a whole bunch of meaningless stuff. But when it comes to the substantive conversations, every single talking point that they've derived from these legal hacks out there on Twitter, I just shoot it down. I shoot it down. I've already seen them. I've already heard them debunked on CNBC. See, it's kind of like Porter Rock said, said something a long time ago, which was so true. He said, there is no X bot out there that's ever going to beat me. Not now. Because to know what y'all are going to say, all I got to do is watch Mooch and Crap. That's all I got to That's all I got to do. And once I watch Mooch and Crap, I get all of your talking points and I can shoot them down. The same applies here. Excuse me, to know all the silly, stupid rhetoric that you guys are going to come to, all I got to do is go to this account or that account. And I know what you guys are going to say. And then I'll go to CNBC or somewhere else, hear them talk about the same stuff, but shoot it down because it doesn't make any sense. Even though they want the deal to go through too, they want more open and free markets. So CNBC is for the deal, but they're not going to sit there and lie to you because they have credibility that they're worried about. They're not worried about clicks. So I'll listen to them shoot down something that you're using as a talking point on Twitter. And that's the, that, that's the name of the game. That is the name of the game. That's all I got to do. So to know the stupid ish that they're going to almost swore, the stupid ish that they're going to say, all I got to do is go see what so-and-so typed today and what so-and-so typed today. To, today and I just sit and wait in the DM for someone to, to throw it my way. And then it's already shot down. Boom, 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 boom. I learned that from Porter Rock. <laughs> the problem with the Xbox community when it comes to this stuff is that you're too hive minded and you're too scripted and you're too talking point based, right? Because you're trying, and why are you like that? You're like that when you're trying to defend the indefensible. Like I remember going to um, town halls and trying to explain to, uh, you know, trying to explain to employees why them only getting a 1% raise was good for everybody. And so I would sit with my management team that I reported to and get the talking points. Why? Because I'm sitting there trying to defend the indefensible. 
Now only getting a 1% raise is not good. It's not good for employees at all. But you need continuous talking points when you're trying to defend the indefensible. And that's a sign that you are not consumer based in your thinking, period. All right, y'all. That's it. I appreciate everybody for coming through. I hope you guys appreciate the information and the conversation that we've had. Um, and, uh, we're going to put this Thursday on, um, YouTube. Hope you'll enjoy it, but at least now you have the truth of what the CMA deal represents. Um, it's it. Microsoft dodged a bullet. That's it. That's not, there's an injection. There's an infusion. No, at best, what Microsoft can hope for is that the CAT finds a procedural misstep. That's the most likely scenario. They find a procedural misstep. They bounce it back to CMA and Microsoft come begging on their knees. Please, 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 They come begging on their knees for mercy, right? And they offer a concession that Microsoft, uh, that, that, that CMA will take. That puts pressure on FTC. This within itself doesn't do it. But that's the only way, but CMA, again, they showed you. They don't care about y'all on Twitter. They can, They don't give a damn. You don't give a damn. We don't give a what? They could care less. Where's that tweet at? I can't find it now. They could care less what y'all think about them on Twitter. They made their decision. It is what it is. Take it or squeeze it, as we say in the hood. Take it or squeeze it. So that's the best case scenario. That's that's that one percent. That's like if you did you guys watch Westworld? I won't spoil too much if you haven't watched it. There's uh what's his name? Arnold. The guy Arnold, um, he's, he's he he travels through the matrix that's part of Westworld, and because the world is in danger, and there's only he's going through. He said, I think he said tens of thousands, if not millions, of scenarios through this matrix, and there's only one way to save the world out of the ten. There's only one way to save the world, and he's doing certain things to make sure that the world gets saved. You know what I'm saying? There's literally like a 1% chance. <laughs> it's possible. There's a chance. That this, and again, it requires CAT to bounce it back. And then once CAT bounces it back, CMA get on their knees. I mean, Microsoft get on their knees begging to CMA with more hardcore concessions. I'll tell you too that I think they're going to have to do take 10 years off take take the time limit off the deals take to, and make it you know indefinite for all current IPs take uh and then add Amazon Luna I don't think you have a discussion point unless you do that once you do that if if the CMA then accepts the new you know proposals then that might even make FTC accept it or that would put pressure on the FTC All right. <laughs> Let me read this. Uh, so shout out to Internet of Games. He gifted a he gifted a sub. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And it goes to want to escape. He said, "Oh my, the irony!" It goes to Duncan. Hey, no, shout out to Duncan. Duncan was one of our original supporters here on this platform. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to him. <laughs> It is what it is, man. Um, Coldblood says, he says, damn, respect to you, Internet of Games. You're a real one. Absolutely, man. He says, supporting like a true champ. He says, uh, he says, get some bots on here next time for the entertainment. I would love to. 
you know what? I might wrap. You know who might come on here? I'm going to talk to Shane. I'm going to talk to Shane from um, We Bleed Green and TTS. That's my bro. I'm going to talk to Shane, see if Shane, Shane, Shane will come on here. Because we were supposed to do a martial arts show together. Like, I still rock out with Shane. That's my homie. I'm going to talk to him. And we'll see. And, and it's going to be an entertaining, funny show. It's not going to be a competitive show. You know, because Sean is just all about jokes. He's a funny dude. That's my bro. I'll see if I can get Shane on here. Um, there's really no other bots that are going to come on here. Because, again, I destroyed them in the DM. They don't want, they don't want, they don't, they don't want to come on here. I'm trying to think who else will come on here. I don't know. If somebody if somebody hears this and then they say you know i'll come on i'm all for it but that's the, that's the thing i already see again i already see their talking points their argument chips and they're already debunked before they even come to me with their crap that's the problem all right with that said i appreciate all y'all thank y'all so much for the support he said sean the bathtub <laughs> yeah him that's my bro we just gonna do it we just gonna do a martial arts show together that's and, and, and if i can find a way to do it i'm gonna still do it all right, with that said, I appreciate all y'all. I got to get out of here. Till next time, have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.